Hello everyone, it's Gina Tatum here from NZ Soapstar in New Zealand. Well, I've finally gotten around to making a video on soap making and today I'm going to be showing you how to make hot processed soap using um, organic shea butter, cocoa butter, olive oil, coconut oil, castor oil, I'm going to be using silk fibres um, and then to colour my soap I'm going to be using mineral spa clay. I've also got a couple of tricks to share with you. Um, a lot of you struggle with soda ash on your soaps and so I'm going to be showing you how to use beeswax so hopefully um, you'll never have to deal with that issue again. Okay so you want to go ahead and turn your crock pots on to a low heat um, and then you want to add all of your hard oils before adding your liquid oils. So I like to melt down um, whatever hard oils you're going to be using. Uh, I'm using shea butter, cocoa butter, um, coconut oil and um, I melt those down on a low heat and once I've melted I turn my crock pots off, I take the lids off um, I don't like the oils getting above 55 or 60 degrees Celsius. Okay, so while I'm waiting for my hard oils to melt down, um, I go ahead and measure out my water. Um, I like to use this blue, blue jug, and as you can see it has those little black marks on it. Um, that way, once I've measured the amount of water um, I need, I can just fill up to the line and I don't have to sit, sit it on the scales every single time. Um, I just use tap water, as you can see. Um, yeah, I don't use distilled water. So go ahead and put your water and your lye, your scales, silk fibres in a ventilated room. And um, then you want to suit up. Go ahead and put your goggles on and your gloves. And um, I put just a very small amount of silk powders, uh, sorry, um, silk fibres in each bucket. I find that the silk fibres, it gives your soap kind of a silky feel and it also um, uh, it makes your, so your soap a little bit shiny too, which I really like. Ah, so here I am, I'm about to measure out my lye. Um, measure it into a plastic container and then add it to the water and gently stir it in. Um, when I'm stirring my lye into the water, um, you know, I've got to be very careful that um, the water doesn't splash up and get onto my skin. If it does by accident get onto my skin, it's no big deal. I actually keep a spray bottle of white vinegar close by and I just spray that onto my skin where the lies touched it. Um, that will stop your skin from itching and it's a really handy thing to have close by. Also, um, when you're stirring the lye into the water, um, you want to try and make sure that the, um, that the silk fibers get saturated. Um, quite often the silk fibers can kind of sit on top of the water and um, you want to really kind of push them up against the side of the container and make sure that they really get saturated with water and that way um, they'll eventually dis dissolve into the lye. So you want your lye to cool down. I like it to cool to around 55 degrees Celsius before adding it to my oils. So um, I go back and forth and I stir my lye, um, I don't know, three or four times, making sure that the silk fibers are fully dissolved um, until it, reach the op it reaches the optimum temperature of 55 degrees Celsius. Um, so here I am, I'm just stirring the lye water with the silk uh, with silk fibers in it and I'm just pushing those silk fibers up against the side of the bucket, giving them a good stir to make sure that um, they will eventually dissolve into that lye water. By the time it reaches 55 degrees, they'll be fully dissolved. Um, go ahead and turn your beeswax on. You want to um, uh, you want to melt that down so it's fully melted um, by the time your oils and your lye reach 55 degrees Celsius. 
So while I'm waiting for my lye to cool down, I go ahead and I add all of um, the liquid oils to the crock pots. Okay, so once your lye and your oils are at 55 degrees Celsius, you can go ahead and add them together. Um, I use a stick blender and a stick blender only. Some people like to whisk as well as use a stick blender. It's totally up to you, whatever you're more comfortable with. But um, here I am adding the lye water to, um, to the oils and then this is the beeswax. I add just a little bit of beeswax at this stage and then I stick blend until I get a light trace. Um, and then I put the lid on and uh, turn it on to low and just let it cook. You want to make sure that the lye is um, really well mixed in because quite often it will sit on top of the mixture. So you just really want to make sure it's um, thoroughly mixed in. Okay, so while your soap is cooking, it's going to go through um, some different stages. You want it to completely gel. And in other words, you want it to look completely translucent before it's ready. You can see see how around the edges of that um, that last one, it was still kind of light colored in the middle. That's obviously not ready. Yep, that's still got a ways to go, that one. But the very end one, I think, is ready and I don't stir them at all. This one that's gelled, I'm now going to stir it, but until it gets to that gel stage, I just leave it alone. Oh God, I hope you guys aren't bored. This is the first time that I've made a movie and um, it seems so long. I hope you guys, um, yeah, I hope it's not too boring for you. Anyway. Now that my soaps reach its gel stage, I can start adding all of the fun stuff like um, <clears throat> like the French green clay and the soap fragrances or essential oils, whatever it is that you're going to add. And um, as you can see, I don't measure anything out at this stage. Um, I, I find that my customers uh, enjoy my soaps being um, strong smelling, so I do add a lot of soap fragrance or essential oil. Um, <clears throat> excuse me in the blue container that's actually water and um uh you know when you do crock pot soap the soap is so hot at this stage you know if you do add a little bit of water to help um mix in your ingredients it, most of it will just burn off anyway so you know it'll just evaporate so it doesn't really matter um <clears throat> Uh, half of this is going to be put into a soap mold and then uh, the um, uh, the other half I'm going to add some exfoliants so I'm actually going to be adding some finely ground pumice and um, it will be one, um, one of my gardener's soap so here I am just adding it into one of my soap molds <clears throat> totally up to you how you make it look my soaps are all very rustic looking, so I don't really take, um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't pat it down and make it all pretty looking. Um, that's kind of part of my branding, is my soap is very rustic and it's almost kind of got a very unfinished look about it, and that's kind of the way that I love it to look. So. And I've got just a little bit left in there, so I'm just adding a little bit of exfoliants. Actually, that one wasn't um, pumice, that one was actually finely ground. Um, uh, oh my goodness, olive stone, finely ground olive stone. So you can see I've only just got a little bit left over, so I just stick it in there. And actually, by the time I'm done with all of those crock pots, that little container is full up. So there's absolutely no waste with my with my uh, soaps, no waste at all. Well guys, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it wasn't too boring. Please go ahead and subscribe, like, and um, the next video that I make is going to be um, uh, basically unmolding those soaps that I just made, stamping them, and cutting them. So yeah, make sure you come back and watch that. Thanks again. Bye.